How's it going guys? Welcome back to the number one high peaks hiking YouTube channel. I'm Jonathan Zaharik. Today we are doing something completely new, not just to the channel, but to me as well. Let me to introduce myself because there's probably a few new people to this channel. The reason why is because today is about the white mountains. Normally, I'm only in the Adirondack High Peaks. That's where, I, that's where I live, that's where I hike, that's what I do. Sooner or later, I needed to expand my content. Now, for the record, this video is probably close to 20 minutes long, and that's for a good reason because we're going to be doing a really long hike, and I need to give you guys some context about who I am and what this channel is about. This camera right here has been up every single Adirondack High Peak almost three times. I just did the single season winter 46 and was able to document that whole thing. I'm a professional photographer in the Adirondack High Peaks. I also guide through high peak cyclery and I sell my photos, but I also make this content. I, I hope to bring you guys some of the most amazing, gorgeous video you've ever seen in these mountains. And today we're in the White Mountains, like I said. And you already know, I'm gonna be doing the Pemiwas Loop, the extended one. 38 and a half miles, 11 and a half thousand feet of elevation gain, 14 mountains, which 11 of those I believe to be high peaks. Hopefully in under 16 hours, but today's gonna be a little bit more in-depth than what I normally do with one of my videos. I'm also gonna be bringing you a great range traverse video here shortly. So I'm definitely looking forward to bringing you guys some more awesome content. Check my socials below. You guys can follow my behind the scenes journey on my Instagram stories. I'm out four days a week out in the mountains doing stuff. And um, I'm so thankful that you guys did be part of this journey. I, 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 th I think it's safe to say that this will be the very first video of my high peak journey in climbing the New Hampshire 48. So we're gonna get a lot of them done tomorrow. We're gonna hopefully continue this series throughout probably until next summer and maybe I'll finish the Northeast 115 next summer and maybe we'll eventually do the white winter. I don't know. I don't really know where it's going, but uh, if you guys want to see the most amazing documentation of the White Mountains, you're at the right channel. So thank you for sticking in here with this long intro. I'm here at the Notch Hostel here in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Beautiful place to stay at. They've been here. They've been here for five years now. So check them out. But other than that, I'm gonna be getting up at two in the morning, make a nice cup of coffee, eat a little bit of something. I'm about to go carb load, eat a nice burger, get some poutine, and we'll get on the trail. So without further ado, here's the extended Pemi loop. See you later. All right, a mile and a half in. We're ready to turn left to hit Mount Flume 4.1. Man, is that right? Jeez, I don't know why that seems so far. All right, real quick, this is my first time in the Whites. I'm an encyclopedia about the high peaks in the Adirondacks. I know like everything about them, but here it's new territory. So it's kind of audacious and humbling to me. So hopefully I'll get all my statistics and facts and stuff that I say right today. But it is 12 high peaks, 14 mountains total. Little haystack and Mount Guyot not being high peaks because they fall under the 200 foot prominence mark. The time is 2.45, I think we're right on target. Light in the atmosphere is starting to show. We're at about 3,400 feet now, half a mile to go. Slowly approaching the final ascent section of the flume. Hour and 45 minutes in, five miles. All right, Mount Flume, point one. So it looks like we're 5.5 from the car. Oh, uh, here's the top. Oh yeah, I can hear the little breeze. Might be a little windy. Here we go. First high peak. Ah, oh, classic. That's actually the summit right there. I wish this was a little bit more climactic. Mount Flume, New Hampshire, 4,000 feet. 47 to go. Man, sorry about that wind. Maybe I should have brought my uh, shotgun mic today, but it's okay. We'll make do with what we have. Now, I kind of just went over flume pretty quickly. Didn't really show much, but that's okay. 
we got Liberty up here, which I'm pretty certain that's what I just said. So we have 1.3 miles in between the two peaks. So we'll probably get there in about 30 minutes. Time is 4.20. <laughs> I will say though, these spider webs are ridiculous. They're everywhere. It's reminding me of Street and I the first time I did that back in 2017. Spider web removal 3000. All right, in the call between the two peaks, about point one from the summit now. Time is 4.42, 20 minutes till sunrise. Now again, I apologize for the wind that might occur, but man, you know what's crazy is I don't know what I'm looking at. Wow, all new to me. All right, so I guess that is Mount Lincoln, not Lafayette. Lafayette's behind there, can't really see it even though it's a little taller. And then that guy right there is Garfield. And then we got Gale Head and obviously the rest of the Pemi here, and we got Owl's Head right here in the center of everything. So this is the whole ridge that we're gonna be traversing today. We got more people coming up here now. This guy just looked at me and was like, hey, are you Jonathan Zaharik? And the first thought that goes to my mind is, are you kidding me? The very first person that I see in the whites, of course, knows who I am. He's like, don't you normally live in the Adirondacks? I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> What's up? Hey, that's really funny. I'm like, no one's gonna recognize me up here today. Like no one, not a single person. So we got Cannon right there. Gotcha. We got some gorgeous colors starting to come out now. Clearly we got Lincoln down there and we got East Peak and Osceola back there. All right, there's so many L's up here. So in case I said something wrong like 30 seconds ago, we're on Liberty and then we have Lincoln, then Lafayette. Okay, there we go. There's the geological survey. And there is the sun. Liberty, New Hampshire 4,000 footer, number two. 46 to go. I like that number. One last look. Oh yeah. That is gorgeous. All right, onward. We have just under two miles to get to Lincoln over Little Haystack. So I think we should be able to do that in about 45 minutes. One of my favorite aspects about the Northeast is walking at tree line, looking to your right and seeing the sun. Just to your right, eye level. It's so unique, it's so cool. We got our mountain just up there. Okay, yeah, so upon further evaluation, it was 1.7 the little haystack, and then it's like another mile and a half to Lincoln from there? I don't know. I looked on my map, but it's not super clear about that. I don't know. All I know is we're making great progress. It is 6 in the morning. All right. Haystack. Liberty and Flume. So in case you're wondering why this isn't a high peak, the thing is even though clearly Lincoln and Liberty rise more than 200 feet up, the thing is here, Little Haystack does not rise more than 200 feet up itself from in between each mountain. And uh, I see our friend Owen all the way on Lincoln. So uh, let's go up and meet him. the summit, summit. We we'll spent about five minutes up here. I'm gonna refuel just a little bit. We're continuing off to Lafayette now. But we are on the summit of Lincoln. Mount Lincoln, New Hampshire 4,000 footer number three. We're right around nine miles in. But I'll tell you though, this Franconia Ridge line though, is pretty awesome. 
I'm going to fork down one of these cliff protein bars. It's going to be a little windy. High point for the day, Mount Lafayette, New Hampshire 4,000 footer, number four. This is also the sixth highest peak in the whites. So again, we got Garfield down there, that's where we're headed next, and we have to descend around 1,500 feet. Oh boy. Just continuing, this is gonna be a pretty mellow stretch all the way to Garfield, so there's not gonna be much to show. It's pretty redundant. That doesn't mean it's not beautiful. But you know, I'll just show you the good parts. All right, so we're going down high peak steepness. That's what actually Brian said in his video last weekend right here. You see Garfield right there, probably about halfway there. Another 250 feet to descend up and over a bump and back down and back up. So much for not shedding any blood on my first round. I slipped and hit a rock. Darn. All right, that took me like 10 minutes. I had to disinfect it, put some triple antibiotic on, band-aid, tape. That hurts so bad. But uh, we're gonna go catch back up now to Owen. Between the trees, I can just see the summit of Garfield about another mile and a half up. And uh, you can make out the little hut foundation that is on the summit. There she is. Holy moly, that is a big ascent. Sheesh, that's gotta be another thousand feet up. All right, let's crank it out. On the ascent now, 500 feet of elevation. 500 feet of elevation. Oh my gosh. 500 feet of elevation gain to go. About a half mile. Actually, probably a lot less than that. 0.3. But 500 feet and about 0.3. Told you I'd catch up. Definitely pushing as hard as I can. Just for fun. track so here's the stats for the day so far five and a half hours in 13.1 miles 2.5 mile an hour average pace I'll probably try to get that back up to 2.8 but we're almost halfway done with our mountains Garfield number six for the day fifth overall 4,000 footer and so we've got the Franconia Ridge right there and Lincoln so what we got to do next is Head down here, refill at the spring, go along this ridge, looks pretty easy. Right up to Gale Head, and then hit the Gale Head Hut. Up the North Twin, up the South Twin, off the North Twin, and then we'll continue the rest of the range. And we have made it to the first spring. No filter needed. So now is the time I would like to introduce to you guys one of my new sponsors. This here is Liquid IV. They are the best hydration powder on the market. I've tried so many, you know, like Noon, Drip Drop, Hammer, you name it. But this stuff, like each one of these guys is equal to like, it's meant to go in a 12 ounce water bottle. Each one of these packets is an equal hydration to 36 ounces. Um, so these guys are what I hike with and that's what I'm gonna be using. I put about two of these in. Uh, my, my bladder here and um, it's great. All right, so we gotta carefully get down this. It's pretty slick with the water. Uh, you can, there's a little white speck right out there. That's the Gale Head Hut. So we're just about two and a half miles out there. All right, Owen, you got a, you got a choice. You can go this way. And you go to Owl's Head. Oh man. Oh, you can I, go I, this I way. You know my answer. Oh, uh, but it's tempting, right? Oh, uh, okay. wicked. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so we got Galehead right there. 
barely see the Galehead hut right about there, and we got South Twin. Ah, oh, that ascent looks pretty gnarly. <sighs> All right, probably a good 20 minutes out from Galehead hut, <sighs> and way out there, that little point is uh, the flume where we started, and the owl's head is right down there. All right, Galehead hut is right here. Man, I still got 7.2 miles of Zealand, and I still got to hit some other mountains. We are now here at the Galehead. I got my handy dandy bag of protein bars, goos, and potions. And I just got this dirt bag bag full of grape jelly, peanut butter, and tortillas. <laughs> the next shot's gonna be on my phone because I'm gonna trail run real quick to Galehead and come back, and I don't want my camera to dangle on my chest. So we'll just hop back real quick. <laughs> Go ahead. About nine minutes, 30 seconds for almost about a mile out and back. 300 feet of gain, I think. Whew. All right. We got about 0.8 miles up the South Twin and it's almost 1100 vert. So this guy's definitely gonna take me a minute. We're eight and a half hours in, seven and a half moving time. So we're doing okay. I hope I get the sun or 16 hours, I should. I'm gonna be trail running a lot between South, South Twin and West Bond. I'm gonna trail run quite a bit through there. And also, Owen is no longer with me, but I'll more than likely meet back up with him sometime because he's not doing the extended. So, he'll probably catch up to me. Yeah, uh, Gilhead, that run took a lie out of me. It was fun, but was it worth it? There's the hut down there, most of the top. South Twin. South Twin, New Hampshire, 4,000 foot. Seven. From here, we got North Twin right there. And the Bond Cliffs over there, that's the rest of our route. You can see the finish line right there before heading back to the car. Here's a perfect spot to see what we've done today. Starting with the flume right there. And then Liberty. All the way up. Now, my Achilles, both of them are actually starting to hurt. I don't know why, because I'm not putting more miles on my feet right now than I normally do. I just shouldn't have done that trail run. It took a lot out of me. But uh, this is going to be about a two and a half mile out and back. I'll try to do her in an hour and 15 minutes. In the call between the two mountains, one third of a mile to go. About a half a mile up to the summit. I did drop my pack, by the way. There she is up there. Here's the summit. All right, did that in about 25 minutes. So that's pretty good. We're about nine hours in once I get back to North Twin. We're about nine hours in. Once I get back to South Twin, I'll be exactly 20 miles in on the day. Not sure if I'll restock up at the spring just to the east of Guyot, but I don't know, we'll see what happens. I'll check my water situation. I did drop my pack. North Twin, ninth mountain, ninth mountain for the day. New Hampshire 4,000 footer number eight. All right, so a body assessment, halfway through. Probably around 70% of the way through with mountain traverse distance and gain. The Achilles hurts. Not sure why. And then uh, definitely the legs are a little tired from that trail run. But as long as I can still average a two and a half mile an hour pace, I think I'll jog a little bit kind of in between Guyot and obviously once I'm done with Bond Cliff and I'm going back down to the car, once I hit the flats, I'll try to send that out there as fast as I can. Hopefully I can get under a 16 hour day. I think it might be looking more like 14. Back on South Twin, 20 miles in. Only five peaks left, mostly descending, uh, but we got five peaks left. We're on the home stretch. So classic northeast weather. It was sunny. Now the clouds are coming in and the rain is coming in, but oh, the temperatures are mild. Feel great. That water might feel nice. And here comes the rain. And the one thing I didn't prepare for, only thing, was the rain. It's okay though. It's nice and refreshing and hopefully it won't last too long. The forecast called for perfectly blue skies all day, but it's the whites. And we all know how that goes. 
Coming up to Guyot, right up here. Okay, I guess I just seem to walk right over the summit of Guyot, I guess. Uh, peak number 10 for the day. So we're gonna make our way down to Zealand. All I know is let's try to do this bad boy in under 40 minutes. So Guyot's number 10 for the day, Zealand will be 11. We're 22 miles in about. Drop pack real quick, I'm here at the turn. I'm just gonna head on to Zealand. All I know is there's gonna be a lot of uphill coming on the way back to Guyot. Right, Guyot is gonna be one stupid long ascent on the way back. <sighs> Probably the largest ascent left is coming back up Guyot. All right, intersections this way. Zealand, it's right here. And there we are, Zealand. Eleventh peak for the day, New Hampshire 4,000 footer number nine. We're about 23 miles in, and all we have left to do is go back over Guyot, and then we got Boncliffe, West Bond, and Bond. And then the eight miles back to the garden. So hopefully we'll get this all done, and I'm, I'm still thinking probably somewhere around 14 hours. Also got some guys here, and uh, ironically enough, he saw one of my videos yesterday and sent it to everyone, you know. He's famous. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, now. <laughs> Based off of the sign I just passed saying the trailway, I think I'm on the Appalachian Trail right now. That is awesome. Now what's not awesome is having to go back up that mountain way up there in the distance. That's not awesome at all. Back to the summit of Guyot. Not much of a view here. Uh, that's all we got left. Sick. All right, so unfortunately, I actually, I actually have to go to the spring and fill up. So, going straight from the source, right there. Okay, that was awful, but definitely worth it because I was out of water. Another point seven up the Mount Bond, five hundred feet again. But first, we need to hit West Bond. Forgot about that. I totally forgot about West Bond. Don't know how. And there we are. Now it's funny, I heard voices up here, but I don't know where they are. But we can clearly see the rest of the range and what we have to do. So we're gonna go back down here and up to the ridge here and go up Mount Bond and down, down, down to Bond Cliff and then out to the car, which is Way out there by those mountains, right there with the ski slopes. One final look here. A lot of miles. West Bond, I'm sure 4,000 footer, number 10. 37 to go. And back down and up we go. All right. Bond Cliff and Mount Bond, let's go. Almost done, guys. Pretty easy grade going up. Bond, I'm very pleased. But we're basically there. Here we are, James Bond, I mean Mount, Mount Bond. Peak number 13 for the day. Mount Bond, New Hampshire high peak number 11. But I'm still moving at a two and a half mile an hour pace. All right, so we're heading down to the Bond Cliffs now. Making progress, trying to get to that summit before 4 p.m. It is 3.40. Can we get there in 20 minutes? We will see. And here we are. A couple people up here. Still about eight miles from the car though. We have mountain number 14 for the day, 12th high peak. New Hampshire 4,000 footer. New Hampshire 4,000 footer, 12th. Time to go back to the car. Yeah. 
so I want to get back to my car in under two hours. I'm not sure exactly how far it is from here. It's like eight miles, I think. But I'm going to put my camera back in my backpack because I'm going to run back. For you, it's an easy transition. Just like this. So I just ran the road in 45 minutes. I kind of want to cry. Not because I'm in pain or anything, but <laughs> that I actually completed that. Moving time was 13 hours and 42 minutes. So the fact that I just did 39 miles in 13 hours and 42 minutes with 11,000 gain, and I feel great. And I started at two in the morning. I am in pain though, but like, that was a lot of waiting time. It took me, it took me like 16 hours on the dot without the moving time, but okay. Guys, thanks for watching. Super Pemmy, woo. That was fun. I'm gonna go eat some pizza now. Uh, guys, I'm training for the FKT for the Adirondacks Unsupported. That's been in the making for two years. And I'm gonna be doing that here in the end of July or beginning of August in time. It's just gonna be amazing. Thank you for sticking in here the whole way. And for those of you who I met along the trail, I met so many awesome people, but you guys are awesome. For those of you who stuck in this whole video, thank you so much. I'm Jonathan Zaharik, and we'll see you on the next video. Never stop exploring.